Hello guys, this is uh, part two of uh, Kafka Spring Cloud Stream on Docker. If you haven't seen uh, my first video, I would uh, recommend that you check that out first. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, producing messages to Kafka. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show you live action because uh, on my Linux machine, I don't have a, uh, a screen capture. Uh, I still have to uh, install and figure that out. But I'll walk you through the steps and the code, um, how to do this. So uh, Spring Cloud Stream has uh, these concepts, uh, source, uh, channel, and binder. Imagine all these three are in your uh, one of your microservices. So start with the source. What is a source? So when your service gets ready to publish a message, it will publish the message using a source. And then you have a concept of channel. A channel is a an abstraction over a queue or a topic. Uh, so in, in Kafka you have topics, in RabbitMQ you have queues. So channel is basically an abstraction over that. Uh, a so it, usually a channel name is always associated with the, the underlying uh, queue name. However, the queue name is not directly used in the code. It's actually in configuration. I'll sh I'll show you that in a minute. So the advantage of this is, uh, you can uh, if you have to change underlying message broker, it's just a configuration change. Yeah. Or or if you want to change uh, the the queue, it's just a, a configuration change. So and then you have a binder. Um, it's a, uh, so binder is actually the Spring code that talks to the the messaging platform, uh, in this case Kafka. So I'll show you the binders as well. Uh, we uh, Spring Cloud Stream comes with uh, multiple binders. Uh, one is Kafka, which uh, I have. Uh, it comes with RabbitMQ binder. It it comes with ActiveMQ. So uh, once it sees a binder in its class path, it knows how what to use. Uh, so the, I want to show you. Um, how that works so for example if you have a spring application any spring application basically all you have to do to make it a spring cloud stream application is uh, add this annotation enable binding um, so what it does is uh, when you do that uh, it turns the application into cloud stream uh, spring cloud stream application and as you can see it takes uh, uh, any interface, uh, uh, message channel interface specifically as a parameter, uh, but Spring has out of the box source and the sync interfaces. We'll talk about them uh, um, uh, in a uh, few, few minutes. Um, so basically, so you set up the, you set it up just like any other Spring Boot application. Uh, so once you have this annotation on your uh, main class, bootstrap class and then all you have to do is uh, go to your uh, application ML file this is uh, this is the key component guys uh, this is where we actually are configuring what goes on uh, so here is the binding and uh, as I showed you in the uh, thing here this is actually the, this part here uh, binding um, so in the in the bindings you specify uh, what is the underlying queue so in my case on my Kafka I actually have Kafka demo topic so this is actual queue name uh, on Kafka uh, and then the content type is uh, you know I'm producing a application uh, JSON so that's that and then uh, here you have a Kafka binder uh, and these are the nodes for uh, um, these are the URLs for uh, Kafka. This is actually my uh, server. Uh, so this part you had, uh, and this is for a zookeeper here. Uh, but this part you had to be a little careful because uh, it it has uh, you don't need to put ports because it already knows the default ports. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it for uh, configuration. Uh, if you don't have Kafka, you want a RabbitMQ, you put it, you replace with RabbitMQ. Uh, it's, that's the cool thing with using a Spring Cloud Stream. It's a switchable and a pluggable uh, thing. So let's look at the code. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, 
Okay, uh, so this is my producer here. As you can see, um, I'm, uh, so Spring out of the box has a source, which is actually the up on the producer side. When you're consuming on the consumer side, which is gonna be in the next video, uh, you need sync. Uh, so once you have the source, uh, so let's go through the source basically. So as you can see here, it has a output, source output, and the sync has a input. So once you're in the source, all you, I'm publishing here, I'm publishing uh, three things, so one, two, three. Uh, all you do is a uh, source, output, send. Uh, this gives you message channel uh, uh, as a return type. Want, uh, so you're calling send on it, and you're sending the payload. So if you have everything configured correctly, uh, like in the in my first video, uh, make sure Kafka is working, and then you have this configuration correctly, and then you have uh, this uh, this part will work automatically. So basically, what it's doing is when you do source output send, what it's doing is um, it's actually going to the output channel. Output channel and the input channel are out of the box uh, in the Spring Cloud Stream. You can also define your custom channels if you uh, if you have any specific needs. Uh, so it's going to output channel, and it's actually producing sending these messages to this topic. It's in this format, and and it uh, how does it know where the Kafka is? right from here this is the name of uh, uh, the server that kafka is running uh, in my case this is uh, docker it's running on docker so that's the production guys uh, once you have that uh, you're done producing i'm gonna add uh, my uh, blog post with more details in the description below uh, all right guys uh, in the next video we'll talk about consumers